humanity had barely survived the brutal onslaught of the Krenim Evera Alliance in 2247 when news of the Galactic Council's stunning rebuke reached Earth. The Council had overwhelmingly voted to deny humanity a seat at the table, citing humanity's rapid technological advancements and aggressive expansionist tendencies as existential threats to galactic stability. This blatant injustice sent shockwaves through human-controlled space, sparking fierce debates in the United Earth Parliament over how to respond. While some factions clamored for war, Prime Minister Helena Nakamura proposed a radical solution. Dispatch a single diplomat to make Earth's case before the Council on Zephyria. For this critical mission, she chose Kyle Robertson, a brilliant young statesman known for his persuasive charm and unorthodox thinking. Though many saw it as a futile effort, Kyle accepted the challenge, knowing humanity's fate hinged on his success. As Kyle prepared to embark aboard a state-of-the-art diplomatic vessel, an assassin's bullet narrowly missed him, revealing the hidden forces determined to keep humanity isolated and powerless. Undaunted, Kyle set forth on the perilous journey to Zephyria, the heart of the alien political arena. There he would navigate a treacherous landscape of intrigue, deception, and ancient grudges threatening to consume humanity's hopes for a greater destiny among the stars. In the grand chambers of the Galactic Council, Counselor Voler of the Avora stood triumphant, his avian features twisted in a sneer as he basked in the afterglow of his impassioned speech denouncing humanity. The assembled representatives, heavily influenced by the tyrannical Krenim Empire, had fallen in line with Volar's position, sealing Earth's fate with their vote. Little did they know that a single human, armed with nothing but his wits and an unwavering resolve, was already racing across the vast expanse of space, determined to shatter their smug assumptions and secure humanity's rightful place on the galactic stage. As Kyle's sleek diplomatic vessel sliced through the void of space, he pored over intelligence reports and cultural dossiers, preparing himself for the monumental task ahead. The weight of humanity's future pressed down on his shoulders, but he refused to buckle under the pressure. He had a job to do, and failure was not an option. After days of tense anticipation, the ship finally dropped out of warp at the edge of the Zephyrian system. Kyle stood on the bridge, transfixed by the sight of the planet's vibrant violet atmosphere, swirling with streaks of crimson and gold. It was a breathtaking view, but he had little time to appreciate its beauty. The real work was about to begin. A small delegation of dignitaries greeted Kyle as he disembarked onto the gleaming spaceport platform. Representatives from a dozen alien races stood arrayed before him, their exotic features and colorful garments creating a dizzying tapestry of diversity. Yet one group was notably absent, the Krenim, humanity's most vocal detractors. As Kyle exchanged formal greetings with the assembled officials, a striking figure caught his eye. She was a Zephyrian female with sleek black fur and piercing violet eyes that seemed to penetrate his very soul. With fluid grace, she stepped forward and inclined her head in a subtle bow. Welcome to Zephyria, Ambassador Robertson, she said, her voice a melodic purr. I am Vera Shadowcloak your assigned liaison during your stay. Kyle returned her bow, intrigued by the intensity of her gaze. A pleasure to meet you, Vera. I look forward to working with you. As Vera guided him through the spaceport's winding corridors, she leaned in close and whispered, You should know, Ambassador, that many here view your mission as a futile gesture. The Cranum have been very persistent in their efforts to undermine Earth's credibility. Kyle nodded grimly. I'm not surprised. But I'm not here to win a popularity contest. I'm here to make sure humanity gets a fair shake. Over the next few days, Kyle threw himself into a whirlwind of diplomatic meetings and backroom negotiations. He met with key council members like Archivist Zelor of the Vostran Librarians Guild and Matriarch Kisra of the Nixian Hegemony, employing every ounce of charm and persuasive skill he possessed. Humanity's ingenuity and adaptability make us valuable allies he argued passionately. We have much to offer the galactic community, if only given the chance. Some of the alien leaders seemed swayed by his words, but others remained unconvinced. Kyle could feel the tide of opinion slowly turning in his favor, but he knew his work was far from done. It was Vira who first alerted him to the impending danger. 
The Krenim are pushing for a vote on a resolution that would severely limit the expansion of emerging civilizations like Earth, she warned. If it passes, it could cripple your people's growth for generations. Kyle's teeth clenched with purpose. He would not let that happen. But as he delved deeper into the web of Zephyrian politics, he realized that the Krenim's influence ran deeper than he had ever imagined. They were hiding something, and he needed to find out what. Vera introduced him to Taro Blackwing, a charismatic Zephyrian rebel who claimed to have proof of a secret Krenum plot involving an ancient alien artifact. The trio began to plan a daring infiltration of a heavily guarded Krenum facility, knowing that the key to exposing their machinations lay within. But even as Kyle laid the groundwork for his most audacious gambit yet, the forces arrayed against him were mobilizing to strike. A second assassination attempt left him shaken, but more determined than ever to see his mission through. The stage was set for a climactic showdown that would determine the fate of humanity's place among the stars. Kyle could only hope that his wits, his allies, and his unshakable purpose would be enough to emerge victorious. Kyle's heart raced as he crouched behind a humming power conduit, the acrid smell of ozone filling his nostrils. Vera and Taro flanked him, their eyes darting between shadowy corners of the Krenum research facility. The trio had successfully infiltrated the compound, but the real challenge lay ahead. The main lab should be two levels down, Taro whispered, consulting a holographic map projected from his wrist device. But security's tight. We'll need a distraction. Kyle nodded, his mind already formulating a plan. Vera, can you access their internal communications? The Zephyrian's violet eyes narrowed in concentration as her fingers danced across a nearby console. Done. What's your play, Ambassador? Let's give them something else to worry about, Kyle said, a hint of a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Moments later, alarms blared throughout the facility as Vera's fabricated security breach sent Krenum guards scrambling to the opposite end of the complex. The trio seized their opportunity, slipping past confused technicians and racing down emergency stairwells. They burst into the main laboratory, a cavernous chamber dominated by a pulsing orb of swirling energy suspended in a containment field. Kyle's eyes widened as he took in the sight of the Nexus orb, its power thrumming through the air like a physical force. By the stars, Taro breathed, the legends were true. But there was no time for awe. Kyle quickly located a data terminal and began downloading files while Vera stood watch and Taro examined the orb's containment systems. As information flooded the ambassador's data pad, his expression hardened. The Krenim's plans were far more insidious than he'd imagined. Not content with denying humanity a place in galactic society, Emperor Draxos sought to reshape the very fabric of space-time to cement Krenim dominance. We've got company, Vera hissed, her ears twitching at the sound of approaching footsteps. Kyle's fingers flew across the console, grabbing every scrap of data he could. Just a few more seconds. The laboratory doors hissed open, revealing a squad of heavily armed Krenim soldiers. Time seemed to slow as Kyle's diplomatic training gave way to pure instinct. He dove for cover, drawing the compact particle pistol concealed beneath his formal attire. Energy bolts sizzled through the air as Vera and Taro returned fire. Kyle's aim was true, years of mandatory combat training paying off as he dropped two Krenum with precision shots. The data's secure, he shouted over the din of battle. We need an exit. Taro's eyes gleamed with mischief. I might have an idea about that. The Zephyrian rebel tapped furiously at the orb's control panel, causing the containment field to fluctuate wildly. Are you insane? Vera yelled. You'll destabilize the entire facility. Exactly, Taro grinned. As alarms shrieked and the chamber began to shake, Kyle realized the brilliance of the plan. The Kreenim would be too busy preventing a catastrophic meltdown to pursue them. The trio fought their way back to the upper levels, Kyle's diplomacy replaced by dogged purpose as he led the charge. They emerged into the night air of Zephyria's capital, the distant wail of sirens fading behind them. Hours later, in a secure safe house, Kyle presented their findings to a select group of council members. Archivist Zelor's tentacles writhed in agitation as he examined the stolen data, while Matriarch Kisra's crystalline form 
seemed to dim with each new revelation. This is most troubling, Zalor intoned. If true, the implications are staggering. We must act swiftly, Kizra added, her voice like chiming crystals. But the Cranham delegation will not go down without a fight. As if on cue, Kyle's communication device chirped with an incoming message. The room fell silent as a holographic figure materialized, a creamy male with sharp features and haunted eyes. Ambassador Robertson, the figure said, his voice barely above a whisper. My name is Zalax. I have information that will confirm everything you've discovered and more. But we must meet in person. The future of the galaxy depends on it. Kyle exchanged glances with Vera and Taro, weighing the risks against the potential rewards. As he opened his mouth to respond, a chill ran down his spine. In the shadows cast by Zalax's hologram, he could have sworn he saw a flicker of movement, gone in an instant, but unmistakably there. Someone was watching. Watching them. Kyle's muscles tensed as he scanned the room, his hand inching towards his concealed weapon. But before he could act, Vera's lithe form materialized beside him, her violet eyes locked on the same shadowy corner. We're compromised, she hissed, barely audible. Tarot's creating a diversion. We need to move. Now. As if on cue, an explosion rocked the building, plunging the room into darkness. Kyle felt Vera's grip on his arm as she guided him through the chaos, her night vision giving them a crucial advantage. They emerged into the neon-lit streets of Zephyria's bustling undercity, the acrid smell of burning circuitry mixing with the ever-present tang of alien spices. This way, Vera urged, leading Kyle through a maze of twisting alleyways. I know a place where we can regroup and plan our next move. The place turned out to be a dimly lit bar called the Neutron Star, its clientele a motley assortment of species Kyle had never seen before. As they slipped inside, Kyle's attention was drawn to a hulking figure hunched over the bar, a Krenim male with a face etched in scars. That's him, Vera whispered. Zalax. Kyle nodded, straightening his disheveled clothing and adopting the confident stride that had served him well in countless diplomatic encounters. He approached the bar, Vera close behind. Zalax, Kyle said, keeping his voice low. I believe we have matters to discuss. The Krenum's head snapped up his eyes widening in recognition. Ambassador Robertson, I didn't expect you to come alone. He's not alone, Vera interjected, her hand resting casually on the hilt of a concealed weapon. Zalax's gaze darted between them, then to the bar's other patrons. Not here, he growled. Follow me. He led them to a private booth in the back, shielded from prying eyes by a shimmering privacy field. As they settled in, Kyle noticed the tension in Zalax's massive frame, the way his eyes constantly scanned their surroundings. You're taking an enormous risk, Kyle began, reaching out to us like this. What can you tell us about Emperor Draxos's plans? Zalax leaned forward, his voice a harsh whisper. It's worse than you can imagine. The Nexus Orb isn't just a weapon. It's a key to rewriting reality itself. Draxos plans to... The privacy field exploded in a shower of sparks as a barrage of energy bolts tore through the air. Kyle's diplomatic instincts gave way to combat training as he dove for cover, drawing his particle pistol in one fluid motion. Masked figures swarmed into the bar, their weapons cutting down patrons indiscriminately. Vera was a blur of motion, her natural agility enhanced by years of covert operations as she dispatched two attackers with brutal efficiency. But it was Zalax who truly shocked Kyle. The scarred Krenum roared with fury, charging into the fray with reckless abandon. He used his massive bulk as a weapon, crushing one assailant against a wall while using another as a living shield against incoming fire. Robertson, Zalax bellowed over the chaos. You need to get out of here. Take this. He tossed a small data crystal towards Kyle, who snatched it out of the air. Kyle's protest died in his throat as he saw the unshakable focus in the Zalax's eyes. The Krenum turned to face the oncoming attackers, his body riddled with energy burns but still standing. Go! Zalax roared. The galaxy depends on it! As Kyle and Vera fought their way towards the exit, he saw Zalax fall under a hail of fire, taking three more assassins with him in a final desperate lunge. 
They emerged into the street to find Taro waiting with a hover cycle, his fur singed and expression grim. We need to move, he said. Krenim death squads are sweeping the entire sector. As they sped through the neon-lit canyons of the Undercity, Kyle's mind raced. Zalax's sacrifice, the data crystal clutched in his hand, the scale of the conspiracy they'd stumbled upon, it all pointed to a confrontation that would shape the hope of the universe. Where are we going? Kyle shouted over the wind. Taro's response was grim. To the only place left where we might have a chance, the heart of the Zephyrian resistance. As they disappeared into the labyrinthine depths of the city, Kyle knew that the real battle was only just beginning. The weight of humanity's future, and perhaps that of the entire galaxy, now rested squarely on his shoulders. Kyle's mind raced as Taro guided the hover cycle through the winding undercity passages. The weight of the data crystal in his pocket felt like a ticking bomb, its contents potentially reshaping the galactic landscape. As they emerged into a dimly lit cavern, Kyle saw a sight that made his breath catch. Dozens of species, some familiar and others utterly alien, working in concert amidst a hive of makeshift computer terminals and communication arrays. Welcome to the heart of the Zephyrian resistance, Taro announced, his voice tinged with pride. Before Kyle could respond, a familiar face pushed through the crowd. Zara Solaris, Earth's chief diplomat to the Galactic Council. Her usually immaculate appearance was disheveled, dark circles under her eyes betraying sleepless nights. Ambassador Robertson, she said, relief evident in her voice. We feared the worst when we lost contact. Kyle's brow furrowed. Zara, what are you doing here? She gestured for them to follow her to a quieter corner of the cavern. Things have escalated since your infiltration of the Krenum facility. We were forced to reveal Earth's orbital defense network to counter their aggression. Kyle's eyes widened. You did what? Zara's expression hardened. It was necessary. The Krenum left us no choice. But it's open doors we never expected. She activated a holographic display, showing the proceedings of an emergency council session. Kyle watched in awe as Earth was granted provisional membership, albeit with limited voting rights. It's a start, Zara continued, but Emperor Draxos isn't taking it lying down. He's already sowing seeds of distrust, painting us as warmongers. Kyle's hand unconsciously moved to the pocket containing Zalax's data crystal. We may have something that could change the game entirely. As Kyle recounted their harrowing escape and Zalax's sacrifice, Zara's expression grew increasingly grave. She examined the data crystal, her fingers trembling slightly. This could be the key to unraveling Draxos's entire power base, she murmured. But we need to be smart about how we use it. The political landscape is more volatile than ever. A commotion near the cavern's entrance drew their attention. A striking figure entered, a Krenim female with regal bearing and piercing eyes. Whispers rippled through the crowd. Princess Zarina. Zara straightened, smoothing her rumpled clothing. It seems our work begins now, Kyle. Are you ready to help reshape the future of humanity in the stars? Kyle nodded, his diplomatic training kicking in as he prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As they approached the Krenim princess, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were stepping onto a cosmic chessboard, where the next moves would determine the fate of entire civilizations. Kyle squared his shoulders as he and Zara approached Princess Zarina. The Krenim royal's eyes darted between them, a mixture of curiosity and wariness evident in her posture. Ambassador Solaris, Zarina said, her voice carrying the crisp accent of Krenim nobility. Your presence here is unexpected. Zara bowed slightly, her diplomat's instincts kicking in. As is yours, your highness, but perhaps it speaks to the gravity of our shared situation. Kyle watched as Zara deftly steered the conversation, her words weaving a delicate web of shared concerns and mutual interests. Within minutes, Zarina's guard began to lower, her responses becoming more candid. My father's actions... Zarina hesitated, conflict clear on her face. They do not represent the true spirit of the Krenium people. As Zara worked her diplomatic magic, Kyle found his attention drawn to a cluster of alien figures huddled around a holographic display, 
He recognized the sinuous forms of Nixian representatives, their iridescent scales shimmering in the dim light. Beside them stood the stocky, cybernetically enhanced frames of the Khan corporate liaisons. It seems Earth has been busy, Kyle murmured to Vera, who nodded almost imperceptibly. Provisional council membership opened doors, she whispered back. Zara's been cultivating alliances. Their conversation was cut short by a deafening alarm. The cavern erupted into chaos as screens flickered to life, displaying a monstrous vessel emerging from hyperspace, a Krenim dreadnought unlike anything Kyle had ever seen. By the stars, Zarina gasped, her royal composure cracking. He's actually done it. Zara's eyes narrowed as she studied the Titanic ship. The Nexus Orb, she said, her voice tight. Your father's found a way to harness its power. The air grew thick with tension as reports flooded in. Emperor Draxos had amassed a loyalist fleet, poised to strike at the heart of the Galactic Council. Kyle watched as Zara's expression hardened, her mind clearly racing through diplomatic and military scenarios. We need to move, Zara announced, her voice carrying an authority that silenced the panicked chatter. Princess Zarina, your insight into Krenim military doctrine could be invaluable. Will you stand with us? Zarina hesitated for a heartbeat before nodding, her eyes blazing with newfound drive. It's time to forge a new path for my people. Kyle found himself swept up in a whirlwind of activity. Zara barked orders, coordinating with alien diplomats and military leaders. Nixian and Vekin ships were dispatched to bolster Earth's defensive lines. A multi-species coalition began to take shape before his eyes. As the resistance prepared for the coming storm, Kyle caught snippets of urgent conversations. Talk of experimental weapons, hidden vault worlds, and audacious attempts filled the air. He locked eyes with Zara across the crowded command center, seeing the weight of humanity's future etched in the lines of her face. A sudden commotion near the cavern's entrance drew everyone's attention. A bloodied Ivaran stumbled in, his avian features twisted in pain. Ambassador Solaris, he croaked, Kradoz, Draxos's enforcer, he knows you're here. Zara's eyes widened, but she showed no other sign of fear. Then we've no time to lose, she said, gesturing to a group of hardened operatives. Prepare for immediate departure. We need to reach Admiral Torek's flagship. As the resistance mobilized, Kyle felt the familiar surge of adrenaline coursing through his veins. The diplomatic dance was over. Now, the real battle for humanity's place among the stars was about to begin. Begin. The ground shook as Zara's shuttle touched down on Krenderus, the industrial world's skyline, a jagged mass of refineries and production centers. Kyle watched her face, set with dogged purpose as she adjusted her tactical gear. We have a narrow window, Zara said, her voice steady despite the chaos outside. The orbital strike took out their main defenses, but those warlords won't go down without a fight. Kyle nodded, checking his own equipment. The weight of the particle pistol at his hip was a stark reminder of how far they'd come from the diplomatic chambers of the Galactic Council. As they disembarked, the acrid smell of burning metal assaulted their senses. Everin rangers moved swiftly ahead, their avian forms blending seamlessly with the shadows. Kyle marveled at their efficiency, each movement precise, each action coordinated with their squad mates. Zara tapped her comm unit. Admiral Torek, status report. Nixian shock troops have secured the outer perimeter, Torek's gravelly voice crackled through. But we're detecting heavy resistance near the central command bunker. Understood, we're moving in. They pushed forward through the industrial labyrinth, the sounds of distant firefights echoing off metal walls. Kyle's diplomatic training felt woefully inadequate as they encountered their first pocket of Krenim guards. The air crackled with energy bolts, and he found himself diving for cover behind a twisted piece of machinery. Zara moved with surprising agility, her own weapon finding its mark with deadly accuracy. Kyle! she shouted over the din. We need to keep moving! They fought their way deeper into the complex, the resistance growing fiercer with each step. Kyle's heart pounded as they finally reached the blast doors of the command bunker. Evoran demolition experts worked swiftly, their specialized tools cutting through the reinforced metal. As the doors gave way, they were met with a hail of fire. 
Kyle watched in awe as Zara coordinated their assault, her voice calm even as chaos erupted around them. The firefight was intense but brief. The warlord's fanatical guards no match for the precision of their coalition forces. In the aftermath, as the dust settled and the last pockets of resistance were quelled, Kyle found Zara hunched over a computer terminal, her face illuminated by the flickering screen. This goes deeper than we thought, she murmured, her eyes scanning rapidly over encrypted communications. These warlords, they're just puppets. There's someone else pulling the strings. Kyle peered over her shoulder, his stomach tightening as he processed the implications. A conspiracy within the Council itself? Zara nodded grimly. It seems our work is not nearly finished. She straightened, addressing the assembled coalition forces. Secure the prisoners and gather all the data you can find. We need to get to the bottom of this. As they prepared to depart Krindaris, Kyle couldn't shake the feeling that they'd stumbled upon something far larger than a simple coup. The galaxy, it seemed, was a chessboard of shadowy players, and Earth was now firmly in the game. Game. As they left Krindaris behind, neither Kyle nor Zara could have anticipated the storm that was about to engulf them. Weeks later, Zara's intelligence networks crackled with alarming reports. Kyle watched her face tighten as she poured over encrypted transmissions in her makeshift war room aboard the Everin flagship. It's worse than we thought, Zara said, her voice low. The Krenum underground isn't just regrouping. They're coordinating with human separatists. Kyle's breath caught. How deep does this go? Zara's eyes met his, steel in her gaze. Deep enough to fund terror strikes across multiple sectors. They're trying to destabilize the council, create a power vacuum for the Krenums to exploit. Within hours, Zara had assembled a covert task force. Admiral Torix Everin commandos moved with fluid grace as they boarded their stealth shuttles. Beside them stood Princess Zarina's reformed Krenam dissidents, their faces set with fierce dedication. Their target, a hidden weapons depot on Zizor's Maw, a lawless asteroid mining colony on the fringes of charted space. As they approached, Kyle felt his skin prickle. Something wasn't right. The moment their boots hit the ground, hell broke loose. Energy bolts sizzled through the air as a private mercenary army materialized from hidden bunkers. At their head stood a figure Kyle recognized from intelligence briefings, Zaral Draxus, the exiled half-brother of Emperor Draxos himself. Zara! Kyle shouted, diving for cover as a plasma round scorched the rock beside him. It's a trap! The firefight was brutal and chaotic. Kyle watched in awe as Zara and Torek coordinated their forces with practiced efficiency. But Zaral's mercenaries had numbers and superior position. We need to destroy that stockpile. Zara's voice crackled over the comm. Set the charges and fall back. As they retreated, explosive plumes erupted behind them. The weapons cache was gone, but so was their chance to capture Zaral. Kyle's heart sank as he watched the mercenary leader's ship disappear into the asteroid field. They had little time to regroup. Within days, the conspiracy struck. Bombs tore through Zephyria's capital, sowing panic and confusion. Kyle stood in shock as he watched the footage, the streets he had once walked now filled with smoke and debris. But the worst was yet to come. As Zara's ship prepared for an emergency council session, Kyle noticed her navigator's hand twitch towards a concealed weapon. Without thinking, he tackled the man to the ground. The ensuing struggle was brief but violent. Human sleeper agent, Zara said grimly, standing over the subdued assassin. We can't trust anyone. In the days that followed, Zara worked tirelessly to expose the conspiracy's leaders. Admiral Grovis of the Nixian fleet, the Zorvon warlord Drokad, and perhaps most chilling of all, the human Hydra terror syndicate. But even as she presented her evidence to the council, Kyle could see the strain in her eyes. They were still missing something crucial. The true scope of the threat revealed itself with terrifying suddenness. Alarms blared as Zaral's forces struck at the heart of Zephyria, crippling planetary defenses. Kyle watched in horror from the command center as Everin dreadnoughts clashed with hijacked Nixian warships in the skies above the capital. Princess Zarina's voice rang out over the comms, rallying her Krinim loyalists to push back the coup attempt. For a moment it seemed they might turn the tide. Then everything went dark. 
The AI systems, Zara breathed, her face illuminated by emergency lighting. They've all gone offline. As they scrambled to regain control, a new threat emerged. Zaro, sensing defeat, had activated an experimental antimatter warhead. Its target, Zephyria itself. Kyle watched, helpless, as Zara's expression hardened with willpower. She strode towards her flagship's navigation computer, her fingers flying over the controls. What are you doing? Kyle demanded, a sick feeling growing in his stomach. Zara didn't look up. The only thing I can do, redirecting the blast, it'll take out my ship, but I can save the planet. Before Kyle could protest, she had sealed herself in the navigation chamber. He pounded on the door, shouting her name, but it was too late. He watched through the view screen as Zara's ship streaked towards the antimatter warhead, altering its trajectory at the last possible moment. The explosion was blinding, scorching a barren quadrant of space but leaving Zephyria intact. As the light faded, Kyle felt the weight of what they had lost and what still lay ahead. Earth's victory had come at a terrible cost. The backlash from the Council was swift and furious, many members outraged at what they saw as humanity's reckless nature. Kyle knew the fight for Earth's place in the galactic community was just getting started. As he prepared to address the Senate, arguing for Earth's full council status in Zara's absence, Kyle couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning. The true mastermind behind the conspiracy remained hidden, and new trials loomed on the horizon. The battle for humanity's future among the stars had entered a new and dangerous phase. Kyle stood before the imposing doors of the Galactic Council, Senate Chamber, his heart pounding. The events of the past weeks felt like a blur. Zara's near sacrifice, the political fallout, and now this pivotal moment. He took a deep breath and stepped inside. The chamber hushed as he entered. Hundreds of alien dignitaries from across the galaxy turned to face him. At the center, still bearing the marks of her ordeal, sat Ambassador Zara. Her eyes met Kyle's, and he saw in them a mixture of persistence and weariness. Esteemed members of the Council, Zara began her voice steady despite her weakened state. We stand at a crossroads. The recent crisis has shown both the best and worst of what sentient beings are capable of. Today, I ask you to look beyond fear and see the potential for a stronger, more united galaxy. Counselor Voler's tentacles writhed in agitation. Potential? Your species has brought nothing but chaos and destruction. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the chamber. Kyle tensed, but Zara remained calm. We have made mistakes, she acknowledged, but we have also shown our willingness to sacrifice everything to protect this council and its ideals. Archivist Zelor's crystalline form shimmered as he spoke. Ambassador Zara speaks truth. Her actions during the antimatter crisis demonstrated humanity's commitment to galactic stability. The debate raged for hours. Kyle watched as Zara masterfully countered every argument her words painting a vision of a galaxy strengthened by Earth's inclusion. When the final vote was tallied, a narrow majority glowed on the holographic display. Earth would join the Galactic Council. The next weeks passed in a whirlwind of activity. Kyle found himself thrust into the role of Zara's aide as she navigated the complex web of galactic politics. He watched in awe as she brokered deals between age-old rivals and pushed through reforms that had seemed impossible mere months ago. The Nixian delegation is waiting, Ambassador, Kyle said, hurrying to keep up with Zara's brisk pace through the Council's gleaming corridors. Zara nodded, her face set with focus. This border dispute with the Karelians has festered for too long. We end it today. Hours later, Kyle stood amazed as Nixian and Karelian representatives signed a comprehensive accord. Zara had done it again, finding common ground where none seemed to exist. But not everyone celebrated humanity's rising influence. As Zara addressed a gathering of Saffron diplomats, the chamber erupted in chaos. Krenim assassins materialized from shimmering portals, their weapons already firing. Protect the ambassador! Admiral Torek's voice boomed over the comms as Everin guards formed a living shield around Zara. Kyle dove for cover, his diplomatic training giving way to raw instinct. Energy bolts sizzled past his head as he crawled towards a fallen guard's weapon. He gripped the unfamiliar device, his hands shaking. The firefight was brief but intense, 
When it ended, the chamber lay in ruins. Kyle emerged from his hiding spot to find Zara bloodied but alive, surrounded by the bodies of her Everan protectors. We need to move, Torek growled, his avian features twisted with urgency. There may be more coming. As they hurried through emergency corridors, Kyle's mind raced. Who was behind this? How deep did the conspiracy go? Zara's voice cut through his thoughts. Contact the Human Krenim Crisis Brigade. We have a new mission. Kyle nodded, already tapping out the coded message. Whatever came next, Earth would face it as a full member of the galactic community. The real work was just beginning. Kyle's fingers flew across the holographic interface, sending out the encrypted signal to activate the Human Krenim Crisis Brigade. Within moments, the council chambers buzzed with activity as operatives from both species converged, their faces etched with purpose. Zara strode to the center of the room, her wounds hastily bandaged. We've uncovered a threat that could destabilize the entire galaxy, she announced, her voice cutting through the din. Corvin and his Black Claw extremists have established a base in the Dracoth Nebula. We move now. The Allied fleet assembled with practiced efficiency, a patchwork armada of human and Krenim vessels. As they approached the nebula's swirling gases, an eerie silence fell over the comms. Something's not right, Kyle muttered, scanning the sensors. It's too quiet. His words were cut short as the space around them erupted in blinding flashes. Antimatter mines, cleverly concealed within the nebula's turbulence, detonated in rapid succession. The fleet's vanguard ships crumpled under the onslaught, reduced to twisted husks of metal. Zara's flagship rocked violently, alarms blaring as systems failed across the board. Kyle stumbled, gripping a nearby console for support. Through the viewscreen, he watched in horror as entire decks were exposed to the vacuum of space. All hands abandon ship! Zara's voice crackled over the comms. Emergency evac to all remaining vessels! As the crew scrambled for escape pods, Zara remained at the helm, her eyes fixed on the navigational display. Kyle hesitated at the bridge's threshold. Ambassador, we need to go. Zara shook her head. Someone has to pilot this ship. We can still strike at the heart of their base. Before Kyle could protest, a violent tremor knocked him off his feet. He found himself being dragged away by Everin guards, Zara's determined face disappearing behind closing blast doors. From the relative safety of an Allied cruiser, Kyle watched helplessly as Zara's crippled flagship limped towards the nebula's core. Suddenly, the massive vessel veered off course, tumbling end over end. Zelkoth, Zara's voice crackled over the emergency channel. He sabotaged the nav systems. I'm trapped. Kyle's heart sank as he realized the full scope of Corvin's treachery. Zara's next words, however, chilled him to the bone. Earth's contingency plans have been compromised, she continued, her voice strained. The doomsday weapons, they're rigged to self-destruct if we try to use them. Corvin played us from the start. The comms fell silent for a moment, then Zara's voice returned, filled with grim persistence. I'm initiating the self-destruct sequence. The reactor's output should be enough to... Her words were drowned out by a deafening roar as the flagship's dilithium core detonated. The Drakath Nebula ignited, a furious maelstrom of energy consuming everything in its path. At its center, barely visible through the chaos, the Black Claw Fortress disintegrated under the onslaught. As the shockwave dissipated, an unsettling quiet descended upon the surviving fleet. Kyle stared at the empty space where Zara's ship had been, his mind struggling to process the enormity of what had just transpired. Princess Zarina's voice, thick with emotion, broke the silence. The Black Claw has been broken, but at what cost? We've lost our greatest champion and our greatest deterrent. Kyle turned to see the Krenum Royal, her usual imperial demeanor shattered. She met his gaze, her eyes reflecting the same mix of grief and uncertainty he felt. The Council must be informed, Zarina said softly. Earth's position, everything has changed. As the battered fleet limped back towards Zephyria, Kyle couldn't shake the feeling that they were leaving more than Zara behind in that shattered nebula. Humanity's dreams of galactic prominence, their hard-won technological edge, all of it seemed to have been consumed in that final risky move. 
The galactic council chambers, so recently a battlefield, now felt cavernous and cold as Zarina addressed the assembled dignitaries. Kyle stood at attention behind her, his diplomatic training barely masking the turmoil within. Esteemed colleagues, Zarina began, her voice steady despite the weight of her words. The events in the Drakath Nebula have forced us to confront an uncomfortable truth. Earth's rapid ascension has destabilized the delicate balance we've long maintained. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.